Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Ryan, and I'm a guide for the Central Park Conservancy, the non-for-profit organization that takes care of Central Park year-round, helping to keep it clean and green. Of course, we know it's very difficult to get to Central Park right now for a lot of people, so we're going to continue making it easier by bringing the park to you through virtual walks, like our weekly walks every Wednesday at 1230. Today, we're going to be taking a weekly walk of a very history-packed landscape called Sheep Meadow. We'll dive a little into the history of this area and also see what it presently looks like today. Our tour today is going to be about 15 minutes long and just about all the pictures you're going to see were taken by myself within the last week. I will show a few historic images as well when we talk about the history of this beautiful landscape. First, before we begin, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. For those of you that are new to these walks, we are using Zoom and this allows you to communicate. You can use the chat feature pictured on the left to say hello, as well as to maybe let us know where you're joining us from. If you do have any questions, we encourage you to use the Q&A feature pictured right in the middle. And my colleagues, Jose and Juan, are gonna be on the back end answering any questions that you might have. The last thing that you're gonna see pop up are gonna be some visitor polls that I will launch throughout the tour today. Once you click, in, click on those and vote, they'll disappear. And once everybody has voted, I'll share the results and we can see what the group consensus is. So we're gonna be walking around again, Sheep Meadow today, a really beautiful landscape that some people might have been to before. And actually on that note, let me start our first poll. I always like to see if people have visited these landscapes before. Sheep Meadow is sometimes considered Manhattan's backyard. So I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of people that have visited this area at one point or another. But I'll leave that poll up for just a moment and then we'll share the results and see. This pictured map is for the route we're going to be taking today, with a few of those red dots being some of our stopping points. So we're going to jump right into our walk today, starting just on West, uh, West 69th Street and 8th Avenue, otherwise known as Central Park West. And I want to thank everybody for joining us on this weekly walk. We really love doing these virtual programs and virtual walks. And we have a great number of people here today, about 160 people. And pouring through the chats before, I saw people joining us from all over, from Argentina, Indonesia. We have people locally from New York, people from Ohio, from Delaware, all around the world. So it's really cool to have these walks and have such great, um, really just such great diversity amongst people and places. So we're going to start our tour again on West 69th Street over on 8th Avenue, otherwise known as Central Park West. And right off the bat, let's share this first polling result and see what the consensus is. It's looking like a majority of people have actually visited Sheet Meadow before. A lot of people have visited Sheet Meadow, but not that many people know the history behind Sheet Meadow. So we're going to jump right into it and begin our walk. So we are going to again start at West 69th Street. And as we enter the park, we're going to enter at a little nondescript of an entrance point. This area doesn't really have a named gate to it, but it does have a purpose. And the reason we're starting here is because there's a little bit of history tied in that fits to Sheet Meadow. So once we walk through this way, we're already going to be greeted by the lush green of the park. And we can see some trees like this horse chestnut tree on the left here is already starting to change colors a little bit, preparing for this upcoming fall season. As we continue walking through this path, we're gonna see a statue on our right-hand side. I know we're exploring Sheet Meadow, but we're gonna take a stop at this statue because this actually does have relation to Sheet Meadow's history. As we walk over, we're gonna see this is the 7th Regiment Memorial statue. This is actually a statue commemorating the 58 men that lost their lives defending the Union Army in the American Civil War between 1861 to 1865. This was put here again as a memorial for these 58 men. And one of my favorite parts about this statue is actually cropped off just on the bottom. But if I pull up this picture, we can see it's the 7th Regiment Memorial's motto, which is Pro Patria et Gloria, which means for country and for glory. One of the cool things about this statue, which was sculpted by the sculptor John Quincy Adams Ward and dedicated here in 1874, is that it actually gazes over at Sheet Meadow. Looking just off to the right, this soldier is facing Sheep Meadow. And the reason it's facing Sheep Meadow is because Sheep Meadow had a really different purpose when it was originally created compared to what it serves as today. If we look at an old Greensward map of Central Park, we can see that this landscape was actually never called Sheep Meadow in the beginning. It was originally called the Green, and the Green was a requirement in the park's overall design. 
The purpose for this was a parade ground, but not a parade ground like the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Parade back then meaning for military drills and activities. Believe it or not, the green, what is today Sheep Meadow, was originally created for the military to use. Once this area was completed around 1864, we see the Board of Commissioners overseeing Central Park's design, really dropping the idea of this being used as a military parade ground. They realized that the military using a public park kind of takes away from the purpose of this park, which, to, which is to escape city life and really enjoy the pastoral beauty and naturalistic beauty that this park would create. So luckily we do see the military never really having to use this meadow. And we see the green really just becoming a beautiful pastoral meadow. We'll learn in just a little bit how it goes from the green to sheep meadow. But now let's snap back to present day and continue walking along. We're gonna walk across the street right here. And of course, look both ways before you cross the streets in Central Park. You rarely will see a car coming by, but there certainly are a lot of bicyclists. So as we walk across this crosswalk, we're gonna start bearing to the left of this path and we can start to get a glimpse of Sheep Meadow today. Continuing just over, we can start to see the area expanding over and see those nice lush green grasses. As we walk over a little bit towards our left, we're gonna to come to one of the entrance and exits for Sheep Meadow. And here we can see a few little rules actually posted. You'll notice that Sheep Meadow is one of the few landscapes that is a quiet zone, meaning no amplified sound can be had. Another thing you're gonna see are no dogs allowed on this landscape. For the most part, dogs can come in most landscapes when they're on leash, but there are a few like Sheep Meadow where dogs aren't allowed at all. This is of course to preserve the lawn and to keep it a little bit more relaxing and peaceful. As we enter the park over here, or rather enter Sheep Meadow, we can start to see some of that skyline and start to see the field really open up. Of course, we don't really come to Central Park to see the buildings, but this is arguably the best spot in the park to see that Central Park South skyline. And actually, now that we're kind of coming into the park over here, we can see it open up a little bit more. And I always like to kind of gauge and see if we can maybe take a guess as to how big this landscape is. So I actually want to launch a second pole right here. This one's going to be a little bit harder, but for this second pole, let's take a guess as to how large we think Sheep Meadow is. How large do we think it is in terms of acres? I know not everybody uses acres, but what we can kind of use as a, a gauge, one American football field, similar to a soccer field, is gonna be about 1.3 acres. So we'll see if everybody wants to take a guess as to how large you think Sheep Meadow is. For now, we'll keep walking out onto the field and we'll walk a little bit to our right. As we go to the right, we're gonna see that there are a few different beautiful trees throughout Sheep Meadow. These trees are gonna serve different purposes and we'll see a few different ones on each different side. These over here are some beautiful willow oaks, which hang a little bit lower to the ground and certainly provide a nice shady area for people to maybe have a picnic and enjoy the beautiful surroundings. Walking just underneath, one of my favorite parts about going under these trees is getting a mixed view where you get some of the buildings, some of the trees and a lot of field. I see just about everybody's finished voting. We have about 180 people here now. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us. We love doing these walks, and we love the great attendance that we have. So I'm going to end this poll in just a moment, and let's see what we're thinking. All right, so I'm going to share these results, and we can see that actually about 43% of people guessed the right answer. Sheep Meadow is only 15 acres large. Uh, I put 55 acres as one of the guesses because if you joined us two weeks ago, you might have learned that the Great Lawn is 55 acres, which is going to be the largest meadow area that we have in Central Park. I also put 300 as a guess, and 300 is actually the total acres of lawn or meadow that we have in Central Park. The total acreage being about 843 acres, but again, over 300 acres of grassy, meadowy areas in Central Park. So plenty of areas to picnic and relax. As we continue along, we can learn a little bit about how, how uh, the green went to Sheep Meadow. Once the green was completed in 1864, we again do see the Board of Commissioners really preventing the military from using it. And what we see eventually coming are sheep. In 1864, upon its completion and upon this decision, we see sheep being introduced onto this meadow. Dorset and Southdown sheep were released on here to graze. 
Shortly after, we see this area being renamed from the green to sheep meadow for pretty obvious reasons. These sheep served as not only the lawnmowers, but the fertilizers of this area. And back during this time, these meadows weren't really used for recreation or picnicking like we do today. These were areas meant to really just capture pastoral beauty, to remind you of upstate New York, and really to kind of transform your perception. It's funny to look at all these sheep grazing. If you block out those buildings in the back, you would imagine this is an upstate countryside. And that was the purpose, to really paint that beautiful picture and also to make you feel just different ways. Great, really great way to connect to nature. These sheep actually had a pretty nice life living on this meadow from 1864 to 1934. For the first five or six years, they were just living out here on the meadow. But in 1870, they actually got a place to live really close by. And we're gonna go check that out in just a moment. So we'll say goodbye to these sheep for now and we'll touch back when we see where they live. But we're gonna start walking just over towards the west side of Sheep Meadow. And as we start making our way out, we're gonna take this northwest exit and we are gonna once again cross the street. Again, look both ways. And as we come across the street, we're gonna be coming up to something. You might recognize this area. One of the reasons you might recognize this area is because this is actually where the finish line for the New York City Marathon is typically placed. Most Novembers, you can come out here and see this finish line for the New York City Marathon, which is of course attended from worldwide residents. We do have a lot of people coming from all over the world to run this marathon. And one of the really cool things to think about is that the last thing these people that are running the marathon are seeing is Sheep Meadow. Sheep Meadow is kind of like the finish line for the New York City Marathon. But as we walk a little bit over, we're gonna see a building just tucked behind there. As we walk a little bit closer to this building, some of you might recognize it. It's Tavern on the Green. What a lot of people don't realize is that this modern day restaurant was actually an original structure for the park. And it wasn't a restaurant, it was a sheep hold. And if we look at their logo, we can really get a hint that's hidden in plain sight. The sheep used for the logo are really paying tribute to what this building used to be, a sheep hold where those sheep lived. This building being created in 1870 was again an original structure for the park. Uh, designed by one of the creators of Central Park, Calvert Box, and detailed by a man named Jacob Ray Mould, who did a lot of work in areas like Bethesda Terrace for the park. But a really beautiful piece of architecture and a really like a living box of the park. We can see some of that original oh, architecture Brian picture them here engage. on this polychrome yeah. mason. Answering all their questions. Really great tile designs and different stones are used for this. And bring up sort of a closer shot where we can Watch, see some of that singer. Tile. If anybody's visited the Festa <laughs> Terrace, which I just mentioned, you might notice some similar tiles that are placed right in here. Really beautiful architecture that can still be seen. Of course, this building did eventually get transformed from a sheep hole to uh, the restaurant in 1934. I actually have this cool picture of, restora of uh, the restoration being transformed from a sheep hole to the restaurant in 1934. This is a photo, um, thanks for the uh, New York City Department of Records. Many of these photos can be accessed by public domain, um, but there's a lot of really cool restoration photos that show the transformation. And if anybody's ever visited Tavern on the Green and walked inside, look up because you can notice that these trestles or that these wooden beams at the top are actually still there. They were restored and added, or really restored and kept within this building. So you can see a lot of the original architecture, both inside and outside. I actually want to launch a second poll real quick because I always find this really interesting. I want to see if maybe anybody was aware of this. I'm sure some of us maybe have had dinner or lunch or breakfast at Tavern on the Green and never realized there used to be a bunch of sheep there. The sheep would actually re, uh, remain on the bottom floor, which didn't have a floor at that time, just dirt. And then there was a sheep herder on the parks department payroll, and he would live upstairs with his family, each morning walking those sheep out to Sheep Meadow across the street, and then walking them back at night. Again, in 1934, we do see the sheep being sent to Prospect Park in Brooklyn, another park designed by the creators of Central Park. And then shortly after, we see Tavern on the Green being created. Pretty interesting little piece of history that we see here. So as we snap back to present day, we're gonna walk just over to the left of Tavern on the Green. And I'll share these results real quick. I see again, we have about, now we have about 185 people or so joining us. Again, thank you everybody for attending these walks. 
share this result real quick. And not a surprise here, majority of people, 77%, didn't know this was a sheephold. There's so much that you can learn about Central Park. Even some things that you may think are pretty black and white have really a lot of deep history behind them. So next time you come to Central Park and walk by Tavern on the Green, you can just think there was a lot of sheep that used to live right inside where those people are dining. So we're gonna keep walking along now. And what we're gonna pass by, we're gonna see already some beautiful fall blooms that are coming in. This is going to be a grape-leaved anemone. Grape-leaved anemone are really cool kind of grape family plants. They have uh, leaves that are looking similar to grapevine leaves. And what this is gonna be is a fall uh, blooming perennial plant. They do really well in both shade and in sun, but it's really cool to already see fall starting to take effect in this late summer season. And there's always a bloom to be had and found in Central Park, no matter what season it is. We'll keep walking past these grape leaf anemones and we'll come back to our main focus for this walk, which is gonna be sheep meadow. We're gonna cross the street once more, again, looking both ways. And as we come across, we're gonna to start to enter Sheep Meadow on the southwestern corner. As we do walk into Sheep Meadow, you're gonna notice some areas have these big dirt patches. This line that is walking into Sheep Meadow is called the desire line. Desire lines come from constant compaction of soil, and really it prevents new grass from growing here. Sheep Meadow, of course, looks really lush and beautiful today, but it, it didn't always look so beautiful. One of the reasons being, there was a lot of events that took place on this landscape. This is a picture from a bee-in that occurred in Sheep Meadow. We do, after the sheep leave, see this meadow starting to transform and taking more kind of recreation and public use. We see this especially taking place in the 50s and 60s, where we see a lot of protests for wars. We see Earth Day rallies. We see love-ins, bee-ins. The first ever gay pride parade actually ended here in Central Park. A lot of formations of protest events and even parades beginning here on Sheep Meadow. We see lots of concerts being held as well. And unfortunately, we also see a lot of mismanagement and really kind of disrespect occurring to Sheep Meadow. This is post concert time. This is uh, after Barbara Streisand's concert on Sheep Meadow. And we of course see a lot of litter as well as even trash trucks being driven onto the meadow. This uh, constant use, all these concerts and events, unfortunately led to Sheep Meadow looking like this. The Great Lawn was known as the Great Dust Bowl, and the green, which is Sheep Meadow today, became the brown because it was all worn out. This was unfortunately what a lot of the park looked like until the Central Park Conservancy formed in 1980. This was our first restoration project. And when we did this, we had a lot of work to do. We had to, of course, replace and restore the sod or the grass. We had to put in new irrigation systems and drainage. We had to really just come up with better ways to manage it, as well as put up things like the fences so we can do different management practices like letting these lawns rest. If there ever were to be a big concert held on Sheep Meadow today, that lawn would be closed for about three weeks to a month to give the uh, lawn time to heal and really replenish itself. Luckily today, because of these management tactics, we have really great care. Uh, we do a lot of different things, having over 300 acres of lawn and 42 million visits of people a year. We have to do things like mow, irrigate, fertilize, aerate, restore, and do different types of integrated pest management for these landscapes. But doing these different things allow this beautiful green, uh, beautiful green grass to grow for many people to enjoy. And today it's a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass, fall fescue, fine fescue, and perennial ryegrass, but certainly creates a nice lush area for people to enjoy. And as we walk along this southern section of Sheep Meadow, you'll notice not only grass, but some, also some nice kind of sweeping trees and rocky hills. As we walk along this southern section, we can see a few different types of trees like London plane trees, the most common street tree to find in Central Park, and one that you can, um, or most common street tree to find in New York City, but also one that can be found throughout Central Park, offering another great area for people to picnic. And as we walk along, we're gonna get more sweeping views down in the southern section. We can see that this actually landscape used to be really hilly until it was made into a grassy meadow. And as we walk down the southern section, we're gonna see evidence of that rock. You've probably heard us talk about Manhattan mica schist, this bedrock of New York City that can be found all over the park and city. But what we see here is actually a different type of rock. This rock that this park patron's enjoying, getting a nice view from, is actually a different kind of rock. That's called a glacial erratic. And that is a rock that was actually dragged here by a large receding glacier. 
Manhattan mica schist got its shape and grooving from this large glacier being, uh, for this large glacier dragging through. And this large glacier also deposited, deposited other rocks like this glacial erratic. So walking along the southern section, you can see some of these rocks that really were just brought here from who knows where, maybe thousands of miles away. But they offer a cool piece of natural geology and certainly a nice spot to get a view of sheet meadow like this one patron is doing. As we continue walking along the southern section, we're gonna get different beautiful views all over. We can see, I believe the majestic over here, the set of buildings in the back, and every angle that we look, we can see either new buildings or new interesting views. Walking up along the southeastern corner, we're gonna have different trees as well over here. A lot of these trees are chosen for different purposes, whether to be beautiful trees, whether to offer shade for picnic, or really just to kind of cover up the road that sits just on the side of this area. But over here under these trees, we do see a beautiful area to picnic, like some of those park patrons on the bottom left are doing. So if you're looking for a shady area to come picnic on Sheet Meadow, the eastern side of Sheet Meadow, as well as that southern section of Sheet Meadow make great spots for picnicking. As we do continue walking up, we're gonna be coming to the northeast corner of Sheet Meadow. And again, every way we look at this area, we can get a different beautiful type of view. It's amazing how one grassy meadow can look beautiful from all different angles, even though it's a similar type of view. But a lot of different recreation to be had over here. No team sports allowed, but you will see people hula hooping, playing frisbee, and of course, picnicking. As we come up, to our one of our last locations, we're gonna enjoy with a little bit of nature. We're gonna see Lilac Walk. But before we go walk down Lilac Walk, we're gonna look at this cool little viney plant growing over here. Oops, sorry. sorry, we're gonna I just look at this picture rather. This cool little viney plant, which is Devil's Darning Needle. Uh, we can see different vegetation growing all around this area, like this viney plant along the fence, as well as in the background, some Japanese tree lilac and common lilac. And we're actually going to walk over to this way to take lilac walk to our ending viewpoint. Lilac walk is a really beautiful area just on the northern end of Sheet Meadow. This little area will take us actually to our ending spot. But before we do, I want to read the plaque that you can find on the beginning of Lilac Walk. Lilac Walk is actually um, a memorial to Nell Singer, who dedicated, uh, who, who um, a philanthropist dedicated money to this area to help fix up this part of the park and offer a really beautiful landscape, especially during the spring when these lilacs bloom. But I felt that this phrase certainly uh, really kind of fits into present day time. Even during periods of harsh conflict and confrontation, the delicate beauty and fragrance of the lilac have been faithful annual reminders of lovelier aspects in human relations. In tribute to those aspects, this lilac walk is dedicated to the people of the city of New York. Nell Singer Lilac Walk, which was created here in April 8th, 1970. And as we walk down this beautiful way, we're gonna come to our ending view. One of my favorite views of Sheet Meadow is actually right here in between these two ornamental cherry blossom trees. I love these views because they really kind of simulate what Central Park is all about, giving you a taste of a little bit of everything. The surrounding city we can see, we can of course see plenty of beautiful trees that'll bloom at different times of the year, and of course these big sweeping meadows. Before we really end our walk, I do wanna launch one more poll and kind of see if anybody has maybe a favorite time to visit Sheet Meadow. So does anybody have a favorite season that they like to visit Sheet Meadow in? As we can see from this kind of ending summer season, you're always gonna get beautiful blooms coming in. If you come during the springtime, this lilac walk is gonna be popping with beautiful different common lilacs and Japanese tree lilacs, as well as some of the different viney vegetation we see. Coming towards this kind of end of summer autumn, we do have a bunch of other beautiful plants though, like the grape leaf anemones, as well as those devil's darning needles. But again, no matter what season you come in, you can enjoy the park. And you might've noticed I put winter in there. For those of you who visit the park during winter, you might notice that Sheep Meadow actually gets closed during the winter time, unless there are six inches of snow or more. If you come to the park during the winter and we have a nice snowfall, these meadows will be opened for people to go cross country skiing, to build snow people, to really maybe in some areas go sledding, can't really do that in Sheep Meadow, but really just to have fun in the snow. So this potentially could be open during any season if the weather allows. 
to see most people voting. We'll share these results just before we go. And we're going to see that looks like spring is definitely a favorite. Again, if you do come in the spring, make sure you walk down Lilac Walk, which is where we just walked down to end our walk today. But no matter the season, you will certainly see beautiful views and beautiful vegetation all throughout Sheep Meadow. This will bring us to the end of our walk. And I want to thank everybody so much for joining us today. Again, we do love doing these virtual walks and we're going to keep them going every Wednesday at 1230. Um, next week, we're going to have Cedar Hill. I'll be leading that one as well. But we do have plenty of other ways to stay involved in the park. We do have virtual programmings happening on most Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Everything from tree tours to crossing Central Park tours to some of our beloved tours like um, Southern Welcome and Heart of the Park. We will be launching out other ones as well, like Belvedere Beautiful View, which is going to be starting up soon, plus plenty of other ways to get involved in the park. If you do want to watch old previous weekly walks, they can be found on our website, centralparknyc.org, or on the Central Park Conservancy YouTube channel. On our website, you can also find other great things like self-guided tours, as well as ways to get involved. Share your story using the hashtag MyCentralParkNYC, or sorry, MyCentralPark, and you can be maybe featured on our social media or even one of the signs in the park. But again, thank you everybody for joining us and for supporting the park. I am going to keep this open for a few more minutes so my colleagues Juan and Jose can answer any last minute questions you might have. But from all of us here at the Central Park Conservancy, Thank you, stay safe, and be well.